In August 2021, following a study funded by the English Football Association and the Professional Footballers Association, a leading researcher into the prevalence of dementia in football encouraged the sport to consider whether heading was entirely necessary. On the publication of his group's work, Dr. Willie Stewart of the University of Glasgow commented that with the current data, we're now at the point to suggest that football should be sold with a health warning. While the research also indicated that instances of neurodegenerative disease actually varied by person and number of games played, and not by era. Dr. Stewart's recommendation at the time was that football should consider eliminating heading altogether. So, regardless of the likelihood or the politics involved in such a dramatic change, what would that look like? How would a ban on heading affect football? Now, we're not looking for a compromise. To combat the dangers posed, it's been suggested that heading could be restricted to certain areas of the pitch, and as clubs are currently advised, that players should be limited in the number of powerful headers that can be made in training sessions. Here, though, we are just concerned with the dynamics and how the game would change if the ability to head the ball was removed from the laws. Statistically, that's an interesting question. On average, between 10 and 20% of all goals scored are with the head. During the 2019-20 season, for instance, 116 of the Bundesliga's 728 goals were headers. And in the Premier League, that figure was lower. 116 of 784 total goals were scored with the head. It's a number which rises and falls, but which fluctuates according to tactical trends and the types of players in each league. And that's a good place to start with our headless football. How would it affect the players themselves? Well, the assumption is that by banning heading, football would usher in an era of smaller players, during which towering centre-halves and centre-forwards would become less valuable and gradually, over time, disappear entirely. But that seems wrong, or to anticipate a change that's already happened. There are very few players left at the professional level who specialise solely in heading a ball. At the back, even physically large players are expected to be technically proficient. And the same is true in attack, where the lumbering target man of old has become a more rounded footballer, capable of linking play in both scoring and creating goals. In both cases, strength and size are still advantages, and even a ban on heading wouldn't obviously change that. But the dynamics of the sport would certainly be altered, and it's easy to imagine the impact on certain aspects of the game. Attacking corners would have to be completely reimagined. Without the capacity to compete in the air, the priority for an attacking team would be to keep their crosses away from the goalkeeper, whose ease in catching or punching the ball would be greatly enhanced given their reach. In a 2018 research paper entitled Mythbusting Set Piece Myths in Soccer, author Paul Power established that in-swinging corners created better opportunities than outswingers, with 10.8% of the shots taken from them resulting in goals, versus 6.5%. Now, part of the reason for that is just how difficult an in-swinger can be for a goalkeeper and the many distractions and deviations they have to deal with and react to. As part of an article for The Athletic, goalkeeper analyst Matt Pizdrowski admitted that as an ex-goalkeeper, he hated in-swingers more because the ball is coming towards you and you have a load of people running towards you in a tight area and a lot can happen. So by removing heading from the game, and with it the attacking side's ability to flick the ball on at the near post, a goalkeeper would enjoy a more comfortable situation. Most likely, with less aerial threat, their area of dominance would extend far out of the six-yard box. Away swinging corners would become more popular, while flatter, driven crosses would surely be the best way of preventing goalkeepers from reaching the ball. Even then, the result of a corner in a post-heading world would surely be a wild and dangerous scramble of the kind that defined medieval forms of the game. It's hard to envisage many goals being scored at all, or even corners surviving within the laws, given the obvious chance of regular injury and the ugliness of the resulting spectacle. The long throw-in would be another casualty. It would survive the rules, of course, but its effectiveness, which depends on many of the same flick-ons and knockdowns as an in-swinging corner, would be greatly diminished. A goal can't be scored directly from a throw-in, so even the flattest, fiercest type, the Rory de Lap long throw, would lose most of its menace without a head to help it on. But there are other areas in which attacking opportunity would actually be increased. Without the security of being able to make the headed clearance, for example, defenders maintaining a high line would become more vulnerable to a quick ball over the top. It may be an attacking strategy that exists already, but its execution would become significantly easier. Tactically, this could lead to a deeper defensive line in compensation. 
Over the years and decades, it would necessitate greater speed in centre-backs and condemn anyone who can't keep pace with a Kylian Mbappe or Son Hyun Min to play somewhere else. Defending a cross in open play would likely become far more difficult too. Anything above head height would be impossible to block before it reaches its target. And even then, actually clearing the ball is likely to involve a more awkward skill, with less margin for error. In what way is unclear, and we can only speculate, but a ban heading would clearly produce a dramatic change in the kind of defensive techniques that players are taught, and maybe alongside a premium on speed, a difference in the type of body types required, longer legs perhaps, instead of stronger necks. But these impacts are just those felt in a specific part of the game, and because most memorable headers occur in the penalty box, it's easy to ignore just how fundamental they are elsewhere. According to a report published by Statsbomb in 2020, most games in the top five European leagues average around 75 headers. And yet, in the 2018-19 Premier League season, just 25.7% of all headers occurred within the 18-yard box. That describes how fundamental they can be to the ordinary phases of the game, even if those headers themselves are largely unremarkable. Now, contained within the remaining 74.3% of the pitch are headers from goal kicks, the headed wall passes, and even little touches with the head that help bring the ball under control. Essentially, moments of continuity that would be lost or needed to be replicated by some other means. So, there's no definitive answer as to what football would look like without heading. Nor in absolute terms what kind of developments within the game that such a move would encourage. What does seem clear, though, is that it would dramatically alter many more areas of the sport than assumed, and that, rather than a tweak, it would constitute a minor revolution. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.